This video is focused on the green side chip shot. We're going to be focused on three areas to improve your short game. First, technique. How do we hit this green side chip shot to improve your contact, direction, and distance? Second, we're going to put in some strategy, helping you understand where should you locate the ball, where should you be trying to land the ball, where do you want the ball to finish in relationship to the hole. And third are performance games, games that you can use to elevate your performance and take it right out on the golf course and shoot lower scores. Stick around for a better short game. Welcome back. Let's discuss some elements of the chip shot that make your setup very important to help you create consistency in the outcome. One of the first things you'll notice in these chip shots is that most of the time you're not standing on a flat lie. So I want to help you understand at what angle of approach this golf club should be coming down to meet the ball and impact. Now, I have a layout here with two alignment sticks. One would indicate where most people, when they hit a chip shot, would be thinking they're swinging down and hitting into the slope. The lower pole, is one that's level to the sea, if you will. It's level. It is not level to the slope, and I've put a foam roller here so you can see the depth and how much ground is still sloping away from that level pole. Now, what's interesting about this is that we want to have the concept in our mind that when you're swinging, that we're not swinging very vertical and down, that we're working to swing more level back and through on these chip shots and the understanding that the closer we can approach on the downswing to the bottom pole the wider space we have to control where the club is going to strike the ground and that's going to help us increase our consistency of contact even to the point that the understanding that if you're coming even below this bottom pole you're actually still descending into the slope, although it may feel like you're swinging with the slope. So keep that in mind as you are working on your chip shot technique. Don't miss out on content that can help you improve your game and shoot lower scores. Subscribe, turn on your notifications, and comment. I'd love to hear more about ways I can help you improve your game. Now let's focus on our setup. When we hit this green side chip shot, we're looking to land the ball three to five feet onto the green and let it roll out the remainder of the way. When we set up for this shot, we want to grip down on the golf club so that we have more control over the club face. And more importantly, when we grip down on the golf club, that's going to allow us to stand closer to the ball and stand the shaft up so it's more vertical so that golf club sits more on the toe. That's gonna help some consistency issues you may be having. As you set up to the ball, we wanna have one shoot between your feet from a stance width and ball position off the inside of your right foot. It's very important that you feel that you lean your nose to the target side of the golf ball when you set up, and that will allow you a stable motion as you go back and forth. When you're moving this golf club, we're working on having fairly quiet wrist, but I want you to pay attention to that when you set up, your elbows are closer to your body, the shaft is standing more up, so it's sitting on the toe of the club, and as you move this golf club, you're continuing to work towards keeping those elbows close to your rib cage as you swing and move the golf club. Continue those three setup keys with your ball position, your stance width, and setting that golf shaft a little more vertical so the club sits more on the toe. Now that we've covered how to set up to improve your contact, we're gonna move right into how to control your direction. I've got two vertical alignment poles on the green, about three to five feet on, and they're placed about three-fourths the length 
of a nine iron apart. And we want to focus on flying the ball between those posts and really focus in on where is the face aimed when the ball leaves the club face on this chip shot. I also on the ground have a piece of string to use for an alignment device for my club face. That's extremely important because it's aimed between those posts. And as we hit these shots, we're gonna monitor where the face is aimed and make the appropriate adjustments as we're hitting shots to learn and adapt to get the face to aim between the poles. And as we get better at that, your direction control is gonna get better on your short game chip shots. we're going to focus on controlling how far the ball is flying in the air. So I have a circle placed on the ground three to five feet onto the green and as we hit chip shots we want to be focused on our ability to land the ball in this circle. Depending on what club we use, once the ball lands then it's going to roll a different distance. So first, when you're back making your practice swings, use those to your advantage. When you make your first practice swing off the edge of the green, I want you to make that first practice swing with enough speed and length to land the ball just past three to five feet on the green. So just past where this circle is. The second practice swing is gonna be one where you make it and feel like it's gonna land the ball a little bit short of three to five feet onto the green. And then step up to the golf ball and hit the golf ball, fitting that swing in between your first practice swing and your second practice swing. So you have some type of idea of how fast and how long your swing needs to be to learn to carry the ball the appropriate distance onto the green. Let's give it a go. second element for short game success is strategy. In strategy, whenever you hit a short game greenside shot, like a chip shot, you want to try to achieve three things. First, you want the ball to finish below the hole. Second, you want it to finish within six feet of the hole, below the hole. And third, you want the ball to finish between eight o'clock and four o'clock, ensuring that you have a straight uphill putt from below the hole within six feet. That gives you the highest opportunity for you to convert your up and down percentage. Notice this piece of pie as I was hitting some shots. We want the ball to finish within this zone. Doing that is going to help you perform better on the golf course and get the ball up and down more often. Our third and final element for short game success is performance games. These are two very good games that will help you not only convert more up and downs, but also put a little pressure on you during your practice to simulate more of what you experience on the golf course. The first game is called 21. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some irrigation flags and you're gonna write numbers one through nine on the flag. And you're gonna place them randomly around the green, in the rough, on an upslope, in an odd lie. 
and you're going to have one ball and you're going to hit a shot from each flag. After you hit the shot, you're going to go and putt it out. You're going to keep score. Your goal is to shoot 21. So you need to get it up and down the majority of the time. The second game is called 27. And this game takes our strategy that we just previously covered and puts it into a performance game. And you're trying to do three things. You're trying to finish with the ball below the hole. Your second element is to have it finish below the hole within six feet. And your third element is to have it finish between eight o'clock and four o'clock so you have an uphill straight putt. You get two points for it finishing below the hole. You get one point for it finishing within six feet and one point for finishing between eight and four. You tally those up after you play nine holes and if you're doing the proper work and converting, you will score 27. I look forward to you having a better short game.